Thank you very much. Uh, good to be here. How can I follow that? I cannot sing. I cannot play anything. I just have the voices in my head. Uh, yes, I'm back. Good to be back. I'm your favorite 12-year-old Syrian asylum seeker from Calais. I started with that joke five years ago, and thanks to the abomination of uh, Tories border control, that joke is still alive and relevant. I don't know how to feel about that. Um, trying to read the room. Do you guys like uh, the truth? <laughs> mm. this, this, this set is uh, suitable, suitable for people who are interested in the truth or milk. <laughs> but it's not about the truth about milk. It's not that kind of gig. Um, you know, they say in a world uh, dominated by lies, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. I think it was uh, George Orwell, or maybe Paul Joseph Watson, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, truth is important. And sometimes, as a society, we have to get along with a collective lie. Like, I've lived in, in the third world, and they like to tell themselves that their problems are due to colonialism, you know? And uh, they collectively try to believe in that. Oh, damn you, the English. Uh, you came here, you colonized us, and... Uh, we became English speakers and our country became attractive to foreign investment and <laughs> international uh, corporations headquarters creating jobs and prosperity. Damn you English! <laughs> yeah, no, they, they just pretend their problems are due to colonialism and then uh, you come to the West and you see that uh, in the West people have to pretend that a lady's cleavage is on display just by chance. <laughs> right? It's not by chance! It's not a wardrobe, you know, a fortuity uh, situation. I mean, is it just me? Summer is stressful. Uh, I mean, why don't these uh, third world countries uh, accept responsibility for their uh, choices and stop blaming the colonial powers? And why don't the ladies stop blaming me and accept responsibility for their wardrobe choices? Just saying, um, anyway, uh, you guys uh, are enjoying your white privilege? <laughs> yeah? Um, I decided to identify as white uh, because my mortgage was up for refinancing, so I thought I might as well get some of those privilege advantageous uh, mortgage rates. Turns out they are the same for everyone. And by the way, uh, when, when white men were in charge, uh, my mortgage uh, rate was a very reasonable 1% uh, interest. And then we had this uh, lady uh, prime minister, just saying, with the first ever black chancellor, just saying. And now they're giving me the sort of interest rate unprecedented since the time Luftwaffe was pounding London. But I think white privilege uh, can be real. Um, white privilege can be real. I don't have time for uh, interaction with the audience. It's a short set. <laughs> uh, when you think about it, if you are white and you are not um, good enough to become an engineer or doctor or lawyer, you can always uh, become an orientalist. <laughs> have you thought about that? You go to the Orient, uh, decipher their um, ancient stone engravings tell them what a great civilization they used to be and they love you for that <laughs> yeah and even if you are not good enough to do that you can always go to the orient to the far east become an english teacher <laughs> right you can go to vietnam or korea or china you don't even have to uh, be english you can be polish <laughs> they can't tell the difference <laughs> you just need to look the part you know I can't do that. I can't pull it off. But, but if you can't do that either, well, I guess you'll, you'll end up working in HR or something. I mean, <laughs> I mean, there's only so much white privilege can do for you, right? It's, it's, it's white privilege is not a miracle, right? Uh, but yeah, white men get a lot of flack, and it just uh, annoys me to see that all these anti-white male activists, all, all these white male haters use the inventions of the white man against the white man you know they have a go at the white man on TV who invented the TV <laughs> on the radio in print media who invented the printing machine sometimes these anti-white male activists 
march against white men on the roads. <laughs> Who built the roads? Why do you think all the roads lead to Rome? There's a reason. All roads. Yeah, they, 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 they walk on these roads uh, shouting slogans against the white man. In their megaphones? Who invented the megaphone? <laughs> it was Thomas Edison who perfected the formula, but it was initially an English and a German scientist. You know, shouting, shouting slogans against the white man into a megaphone is like beating up a Japanese guy with a Walkman. <laughs> do you remember Walkman? I mean, I used to have one. I know I look young, uh, but we all do because of all these good inventions, medicine and cosmetics by the white man. And the reason all these anti-white men activists have so much time on their hands, sitting down on, 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 sitting down on their bumps, thinking about being oppressed, is because of the dishwasher and the fridge and the washing machine <laughs> and the toaster. I mean, they wouldn't have had time to think about their victimization if they had to take the laundry to the river. Right? So yeah, now uh, in America they have this idea of defunding the police to, find, to fight white supremacy. I say if you want to fight white supremacy, you must defund schools. Because when you go to schools, you realize that white people are actually kind of supreme, aren't they? I mean, I, 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 did you go to school? I went to school, and I, I, I went to school in, in Iran. Have you heard about it? <laughs> Fans of Iran are in tonight? <laughs> One of them was heckling me with the, with the phone. But listen, <laughs> Iranians are not exactly white, but they are also not not white. So we spend a lot of time on Ancestry.com <laughs> to figure out what the hell went wrong. Um, but anyway, you, you go to school in Iran, day one, uh, welcome to the school and congratulations on making it to the sixth year of your life, which is no mean feat in Iran. And it's thanks to penicillin invented by a Scottish man, right? Now let's study physics, the study of the universe. And what is the most important thing in the universe? What is the most important force? It's gravity, discovered by an English man who had an apple fall into his head. I mean, can you imagine that? The whole humanity had, had to wait for this guy to be hit. I'm, I'm sure throughout humanity, a lot of other people had been hit by coconuts or bananas in their head. <laughs> Nobody figured it out. I mean, that's, that's how good white men are. They, dis they discover stuff while napping. How good are the English? How good are the English? How good are the Danish? I mean, their biggest export, crime thrillers. It's a homogenous nation. <laughs> they don't know what murder is. But the, the imagination, the fantasy, you know, half Disney catalog is Hans Christian Andersen. The, the Danes invented imagination. How good are they? How good are the French? The French invented acting. It's been seven years since the end of the Second World War. They have been consistently pretending to have won the war. <laughs> How good are they? How good are the Portuguese? They invented self-confidence. Can you imagine the self-confidence to go around and colonize others when you're Portuguese? <laughs> right? Fun, fun fact for you, I, I need to, I need to uh, wrap it up. Um, do you know that, uh, uh, do you know why pasteurized milk is called, called pasteurized? Louis Pasteur, yeah, the inventor, the French uh, scientist. Do you know Pasteur is so important that there's a street named after him in Tehran? And not just any street, that is the street where the presidential palace is located. That's how much they care about their pasteurized milk. And then uh, at the Iranian school, after you learn physics and history, oh, by the way, I forgot this, they teach you history. We used to be an ancient people, according to these ancient stone engravings. We have no idea what they say. We are waiting for this orientalist to come. <laughs> this guy who couldn't get girls, so he went to sew us. Uh, <laughs> mm, mm. And then, 
modern history, evil Brits came, they discovered our oil, they laid down the oil pipes, they invented the oil tankers, they invented the engine that runs on the oil, and when everything was operational, we kicked them out, they wouldn't want to leave. Can you believe these bastards? <laughs> evil British colonialists. Anyway, school day is over, guys. Now, at the end of every school day in Iran, you have to stand up and listen to the message from the President of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Okay, stand up, guys. We shall fight them in Iran, and we shall fight them in Yemen, and we shall fight them in Iraq, and in Lebanon, and in Luton, and we shall fight them in Paris, and our victory shall be inexorable. Death to the West, death to the infidels. Please follow me on Twitter. I'm at real death to the West. And that was the presidential message from His Excellency's offices at Avenue Louis Pasteur. <laughs> in central Tehran. You cannot defeat imperialist armies on a stomach upset by unpasteurized milk. <laughs> so I think I have conclusively proven that the whites are supreme indeed and based on the Iranian school curriculum no less. Thank you for listening. I've been Nicholas DeSanto. Nicholas DeSanto!